Let's venture back down TurboView's memory lane with a little R&R. Hey everybody, welcome back to another random rerun for the TurboView series. It's time for some gates and some lords of thunder, that is. Two shoot 'em ups we looked at over a decade ago that to me are TurboGrafx Super CD favorites. Gate of Thunder was TurboView's episode number 46 and Lords of Thunder was number 47 right after, both originally reviewed in 2010. If you watched the TurboView's demystification episode, and I'm sure you did, you probably already know this, but in order to play Super CD games, you needed a Super System card for your TurboGrafx CD-ROM, or you could simply pick up the Turbo Duo. As a TG16 CD owner back in the day, the Super System card was my required choice. I mailed away for this along with the game bundle, receiving them in November or December of 92. Now what was in this game bundle? Well, the Gate of Thunder multi-game disc, of course. And I couldn't wait to grab my first ever Super CD. As a fan of shooters, this Hudson Soft and Red creation really grabbed my attention from the moment I popped it into my CD drive. Of course, some of that excitement could simply have been fueled by Bonk saying, Gate of Thunder! Which <laughs> was hilarious. But the nice cutscenes, fantastic music, multi-scrolling backgrounds, fast action, I mean, all of it combined together and totally worked for me. Gate of Thunder is very diverse, with areas changing mid-stage, really cool ways to flip and flop the options, nice weapon upgrades, awesome music with a wide array of sampled sound effects, and a smooth ramp up in difficulty. In a way, it's very simple in structure, but has a wonderful layout over its seven stages. It shows off the Super CD technology very well. Stay clear. I gave this disc one of the half dozen five out of five TurboViews ratings, and I still would today. Now, if you're a collector, this game was only released in a plain CD case with a white spine. There's nothing fancy to it really at all, but there are some fun CD inserts that collectors have created out there to spice up your game. So definitely check them out if you're so inclined. As soon as you pop in the next game in the series, you know that you're in for a treat. In fact, Lords of Thunder changes things up quite a bit, creating a different shooting experience than the previous game. The fantasy-like approach is just so cool in design, weapons, enemies, etc. Just like the previous, there are seven levels with a definite and distinct theme from one to another. In this case, you have fire, earth, and more. This one allows you to play the first six in any order you wish, which adds a nice non-linear aspect. Before a stage begins, you can also choose an armor and weapon of your choice each with its own attacks. Plus you got the sword attack, you got shops with crystals all over the place to collect. You see, there is a lot of wonderful imagination all over this game, and it's very inventive. In fact, Lords of Thunder looks impressive with a ton of detail. And did I mention the music is awesome? Like the previous game, it's another super CD showpiece for sure. I picked up my Lords of Thunder in early 1993, not too long after Gate of Thunder. Also FYI, Lords of Thunder was brought to the Sega CD, another console I indulged in as a kid. While I didn't have that particular version sticking solely with the Duo gem, it's great that many people got to bask in this excellent, highly popular shooter. Really killer music, CD sound, uh, great graphics. It's, it's really cool. Game. Music is the best. Music is uh, much like concerts I go to. 
Yeah, this random rerun was a bit of a gush fest, but you know, both Thunder games represent some of the best on the Turbo Duo and two of the stronger Super CDs in the bunch. Check them out. And that's a quick little revisit with the Thunder games on Super CD. If you're interested, we're going to now roll both reviews one after another. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all on the next Random Rerun. Gate of Thunder, f***ing awesome. Well, what else is there to say, really? The game is just... You want to see more, huh? Even though I just gave it all away already? Okay. Gate of Thunder is a horizontal shooter developed by Hudson Soft and Red. It was one of the pack-in games for the Turbo Duo, and you could also get it with the original Super System card. For many people, it was the first introduction to the new Super CD format. I know that was the case for me, and I'm pretty thankful. The CD was called a 3-in-1 disc, and at startup, Bonk introduced a selection screen. Who got Bonk? Along with Gate of Thunder, you could also choose between Bonk's Adventure or Bonk's Revenge. Bonk's Adventure! Both of which were identical versions of the original Turbo Chip games. In fact, the disc came with manuals for both. There was uh, also a secret hidden Bomberman, but it's a secret, so I'm not going to tell you how to access it. No, 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 don't even ask. <clears throat> Gate of Thunder! Gate of Thunder begins with some really awesome animated sequences and some really awesome music. There are only two cutscenes, at the start and at the end, but they're both great. You are immediately bombarded with enemies, multi-scrolling backgrounds, multiple locations and explosions, yeah, pretty much everything you could want. <laughs> Collecting a unit awards power-ups, including the Laser Beam, Blue, Waves, Green, and Earthquake, Red. Each of these has two different stages, and options appear which can be spun around to attack from behind. You can possess multiple weapons and switch immediately whenever you want. You can also collect high-speed missiles, and shields, allotting for a few extra hits. Is that all? <laughs> nope. Once weapons are maxed, collecting a unit shoots a mega super death thing across the screen, destroying a ton of stuff all at once. Nice. The game has a good length with seven stages, and trust me, things get a tad nutty after the fifth. I am very happy for the extra lives awarded at certain point values. This gives the score counter a purpose, and shooting a ton of enemies increases it fast. The game is very diverse with many locations and obstacles. Something always changes or morphs, adding a lot of new things to see. Areas switch from rock faces to mechanical mazes to biomechanical designs. Stage obstacles include flames, attacking background panels, claws shooting from the ground, stuff coming out of doorways, random missiles, stationary lasers... Man! And if you're claustrophobic, the game will drive you crazy, as things tend to close in really tight. Gate of Thunder shows off the Super CD technology pretty well, with bright and wonderful colors, great detail, and awesome designs. The game never seemed to slow down or flicker, even with a ton of enemies and bullets on the screen. 
The music is fantastic, and the variety of sampled sounds and explosions is great. They spent a lot of time mixing things up. The look and sound? <laughs> no complaints. Everything control-wise is pretty solid. The hunting dog fighter plane moves smooth, and hitting select changes the speed by a few levels so you can customize it to your liking. Button 1 switches weapons with ease, button 2 continuously fires, and giving it a quick tap swaps the direction of the options. Now if I'm being really picky, there were times the tap didn't seem to work and I had to do it a second time, but these were very minor occasions. Overall, it controls exactly as you would want a horizontal shooter to, well, control. Gate of Thunder has a lot of diversity and in some ways is almost over the top. In fact, some minor enemies seem like bosses. They're not, they're just intimidating. The bosses themselves are really unique and have fun patterns. Now, in normal mode, you can decipher those patterns easily, especially if you're fully powered. In many ways, normal is more for training, preparing you for the hard mode, which to me is the true game. You see, hard mode has more enemies, more bullets, and slightly faster... everything. Most notably, the end bosses have a lot more attacks and trickier patterns. Here is normal mode with this boss, and here is hard mode with this boss. <laughs> See? Hard requires more planning and skill, and will take your stock of seven continues away much faster. Up for even more punishment, there is also devil mode. Yikes. Well, I'm sure you can tell, I love Gate of Thunder. Everything is spicy and new, and the game feels fresh and unique. It changes things up often, and really adds an exciting amount of goodies into a horizontal shooter. It was a great game to show off the Super CD, and it pushes the hardware quite far, at least in terms of this kind of genre. I highly recommend it for shoot 'em up fans a true explosive favorite. Stay clear. You know, we might as well keep the verdict short. Five out of five for Gate of Thunder. One of the best. Let me end this as I began. F***ing awesome. So, you are Hudson Soft and Red, creating a sequel to the f***ing awesome shooter, Gate of Thunder. What do you do? Well, first off, you design a title screen like this. And you create some new amazing music tracks, like this. Then, just as before, you design a really cool opening sequence, introducing the storyline and enemies. And finally, you change things up, making it a different shooting experience, yet familiar in its awesomeness... ...ness. Lords of Thunder takes a more fantasy approach to its design, weapons, and enemies, as you control a warrior out to stop the evil Zagart from destroying the lands of Mistral. No more hunting dog this time. Make room for Landis. There are seven distinct levels, each with a unique theme, such as ice and snow, fire, earth, etc. However, this game takes a less linear path by allowing you to choose which order to play the first six. In my Gate of Thunder review, I mentioned that in Stage 1, you were immediately bombarded with enemies, multi-scrolling backgrounds, multiple locations, and explosions. Yeah, well, the same could be said for its sequel, as there are a ton of fun enemies and designs no matter which stage you play first. 
as before, the levels are all very long and diverse with some really great imagination. Lords also has that variety factor, as the levels begin horizontal, but then tend to veer off into a diagonal. Then the background will change into something different, then a weird enemy will appear out of nowhere. See, that variety is just amazing, and one of my favorite things keeping this series from ever getting stale. I mean, look here. We have the water, where you'll find... Whoa, 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 hey, wait, hey! Where'd the water go? Well, anyway, bubbles. How could you not love bu Hey, hey, hey! Quit pushing me! Damn it! See? Variety. In Lords, before each stage, you can choose the armor and weapons of your choice. There are four types, including fire, earth, wind, and water. Each has its own method of shooting and bombing, allowing you to select the best one for each stage. The more energy you possess, the more powerful the weapon is, thereby making it necessary to not get hit. Yeah, nice wish. Also, when you get close to an enemy, Landis uses his sword thing to slash away. Before each stage, you can also purchase items from a shop, including bombs, shields, and more. You definitely want to stock up on hearts and elixirs to replenish your energy once depleted. How do you afford these items? By constantly collecting crystals left behind. There are a ton of them, and if you get addicted to collecting stuff like me, <laughs> this can be super fun. <laughs> oh man, I love it. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Unlike in Gate, there are a lot of mystical and biological creatures with a less mechanical feel. Just as before though, some of them are huge and seem like mini-bosses in and of themselves. Speaking of bosses, I love how they first appear, seemingly a puny little unremarkable foe. Then wham, they grow to the entire screen. Oh, hell. From a graphical standpoint, Lords is very impressive. Very colorful, with multi-scrolling galore and a ton of detail. There is a lot of dimension and a lot of invention. An overall excellent looking game and a Turbo Duo standout. Once again, the sound in Lords is fantastic with excellent music. The sampled sound effects package is not as impressive as Gate, but there is still enough variety to make sure it doesn't get boring or bland. The control is great, and even though this time you cannot customize the speed, I never felt like Landis was sluggish or unresponsive. Once again, button 2 continuously fires, but this time button 1 shoots out a bomb, which you can carry up to 3. The game has a great feel and great control, so... Thumbs up. You definitely want to try and save crystals early on to make sure you have enough in order to stock up on elixirs for the final stage, and especially the final boss. He is super hard with three different forms. The game also allows you into the shop before this final battle and lets you select a different attack and armor if you wish. Unlike Gate of Thunder, which had a slow ramp up in difficulty, Lords seemed pretty balanced in the first six stages, then slammed you on the final one. Now trust me, the first six are not a walk in the park, but the balance overall is not as solid as the previous game. When you continue, you are transported to either the beginning of the stage or right before a boss battle, which is kind of nice. Lords has a few levels you can choose from, including normal, hard, and super. But it doesn't quite give you that hunger to necessarily defeat it multiple times, mostly because of this lack of balance in that final stage. However, it is still an amazing game, and you can see why it has become a highly popular shoot-em-up for the Turbo Duo.
Gate of Thunder raised the bar pretty high in terms of a horizontal shooter. While Lords of Thunder is a very worthy and excellent sequel, keeping the fun and uniqueness of the original while adding new weapon systems, shops, and a slightly non-linear feel. If you own a Super CD, both Thunder shoot'em ups are a no-brainer to pick up in my opinion, and represent some of the best of the Turbo Duo.